Whoa, it's Cliff here from Down Under. Here I am, crouched beside Thread Express. This is video number six on this thread milling attachment. Um, I'm going to go into thread extending in this video and also another little thread milling job. I'm going to talk about the benefits of Thread Express, but I'm also going to talk about the problems with Thread Express, the pros and the cons. I'll run a little montage now just to remind us all about what this attachment can do. And we've got our skewed scallops. It's a little uh, thumb grip. I'll show it to you in its application in a minute. So all of these tests are coming out really well. Machining hexagon nuts with threads. You can machine bolts. All in the one setting, the thread and the hexagon. And from the previous video, tests such as machining a very small slender three millimeter screw that's less than an eighth of an inch with a thread milling much lighter machining loads than you get with screw cutting larger parts that are made out of 4140 a much bigger part here particular job illustrates the advantages of thread milling for this type of application where you need a very accurate pitch over a long length where you need to get right down to the shoulder so the cutter can swing around really close there and you don't want to have an undercut for screw cutting because that will weaken it and reduce the length of the thread and where you want to machine it in a high tensile steel, this is high tensile steel. And you can see the cutter there is just shy of the base. Well, if you're new to Thread Express, you might be wondering what it is. It's uh, like a dividing head or an indexing head that allows you to do indexing, but it also has an internal pitch generating mechanism that I invented several years ago. Um, I won't go into that in detail in this video, it'll be just too long winded. Have a look at the previous videos, there's five previous videos uh, outlining all different aspects of this attachment. Stay on and I'll go into a couple of examples of different types of thread milling. I'll just show you how quick and easy it is to install Thread Express on my milling machine for when I want to do some thread milling or indexing. So this is how I have my mill normally set up. I have the vise over on the left hand side of travel and on left hand position that leaves a blank space on the right so I can clamp work there without having to move the vise. Another advantage is you are using more of the travel of the table and wearing the lead screw and slideways more evenly. I've got a permanently mounted subplate there for Thread Express so I can slip it on quickly and easily. And I've got a turret style, Bridgeport style machine which allows me to spin the head round quite quickly and easily. Okay, so just lift it into place not too heavy, slip the stud in, slip the nut on, tighten that up, turn the turret round, and tighten that up with those bolts, 
put in these screws, tighten them up. Literally about two minutes work. Some jobs are ideally suited to thread milling. For example, these adjusting screws, I always run out of adjustment on them and I wish I had the thread going the whole way, but they're high tensile bolts and you can't just run a high speed steel die down them. I've tried that in the past and the high tensile steel is just too hard a job for a high speed steel split die. You know, you, you'll probably wreck the die on the first bolt if not the second one. Um, it's just too big a cut for a split die. So that doesn't work. Um, I could set it up in the lathe with a center and put an undercut there and pick up the thread and screw cut it. That's a pretty long winded difficult job and it would weaken the bolt. I could do it in my CNC thread milling and interpolate around it and uh, but that would take quite a bit of setting up getting it all matching the thread and just a really difficult job so I, I haven't done it but now I've got Thread Express I can thread mill it. I'll just show you how easy a job like this is in Thread Express. Setup is easy put the bolt in the three jaw chuck set the pitch on the single nut adjustment on the scale to in this case to 1.5 millimeters pitch wind in the slideway until the cutter is inside the valley of the thread using the Z adjustment either with the knee or the quill until it's in a line and then I'm ready to go. Thread milling with a tungsten carbide fly cutter can easily handle high tensile steel. Um, I'm just using old broken tungsten carbide milling cutters. I need to make a better holder for bigger bolts and so on because I had to undercut this one quite a lot to clear but you can see it's a, a beautiful finish in high tensile steel. You can see somewhere here, there, just there you can see the start of where I just settled the cutter into the valley of the thread and then just with one cut just wound the work until the um, thread was cut as far as I wanted to go. That's all the way to the head. Just a brilliant process for this type of work. Of course a lot of the advantages of Thread Express also apply to thread milling in a lathe. You can make your own thread milling attachment with an adjustable helix angle and bolt it on the tool post and use your uh, screw pitch adjustments and do thread milling in a lathe. Um, so that might be worth considering for some of you folk. That's how I got into thread milling and I've been doing it in a lathe for many years. But Thread Express is an attachment for milling machines and it has some advantages over thread milling in a lathe. I've had a lot of comments about the attachment sizing and why do I have to have it hanging off the end of the table there um, and why can't you make a smaller version to suit mini mills because there's a big market for the uh, small hobbyist that has a mini mill and so I've been thinking about whether that would be possible but there's some real problems this is a real con of the design is that it requires at least a medium size Bridgeport style milling machine or a machine with a horizontal spindle so that you can sit it flat on the table because if you've got a little mini mill even if I were to design and format a very small attachment something like that it has to have a certain length of, of distance between the bearings and you've got a certain amount of travel and you've got to mount it on the base somehow and you've got to have a chuck or something and really all of that adds up to just even taller than what I've drawn there. It doesn't really work sitting it on the table even on a, a medium sized milling machine like this it would not never really work on a mini mill. I'm sorry but I just can't see a way of doing it. It really needs to hang off the side of the table and have a turret that swings around to align the spindle 
So a Bridgeport type of machine or a machine with a horizontal spindle. If you can think of a way of doing it, let me know. I spent many hours thinking about this and I can't see how it can suit a mini mill. And that means that that huge market of small hobby shops really can't fit one on their machine. Imagine some of you are thinking, well, what if you didn't have a chuck? What if you installed, you know, a 5C collet and held the work down inside the spindle? Yeah, that could be done and that would help with the height, but it's very limiting. A chuck is much more versatile. It can hold a much bigger range of parts and size of parts. And also, don't forget, you've got to have the work coming up beyond the collet or the chuck that much further for the uh, length of the travel. So overall, it's still really tall, even if it's held there. And also, that distance of uh, headstock bearings is really too squat as it is. You need a decent distance between the bearings to have a rigid spindle and headstock arrangement. It really is just too tall to sit on the table of a small machine. It really needs a serious, a serious scale hobbyist that has Bridgeport style or Bridgeport clone turret mills that can spin the turret around to one side or folk who have a horizontal spindle. Either a serious scale hobby shop or a fully professional commercial shop is where I think the market has to be for this. Really noticeable compared with screw cutting in a lathe just how light the cutting forces are. Because you've got a cutter running at high RPM, um, you see I've ground this one away to clear under the head of the bolt, which is all wrong. It's a very fragile little cutter. Um, I need to change the design of the cutter holder so the cutter is more coming out more straight. But this is just a quick uh, cutter, just to do a quick job. And yet it still holds up, showing me that you've got a huge mar design margin there um, because the cutter loads are so light, because you're spinning the cutter, you're getting very light cuts at high RPM um, with tungsten carbide. It's completely different from screw cutting in a lathe. And this is a real advantage of the thread milling process. Death by a thousand cuts is much easier. Well, that's all six adjusting screws cut now. Very quick process. And this process. Just set the pitch with a single bolt on the scale and wind the handle. Cutting short threads in high tensile steel is an ideal job for thread milling. I'm going to ma machine these little inserts up. My milling machine has a NT30 taper but I can more readily buy BT30 tapers which normally have pull studs connected to them but I'm making up some inserts here that will convert the BT30 to the NT30. Thread cutting made easy. You can't lose the pitch. There's no backlash. Gravity takes care of that. You can cut going up or going down. Picks up the thread perfectly each time. So it's a 12mm 1.75 pitch metric thread, 1.07 depth, um, one cut at 0.9 and a finishing cut to the 1.07. Well let's try it for fit. Oh, that's nice. Well, that's it installed. I made a spare insert in case I pick up another cutter holder. Fly cutting with a tungsten carbide cutter, thread milling in even in high tensile steel gives such a beautiful finish. It's such a joy to cut a thread like that. Look at how ropey the turned finish is. Typical Terry high tensile steel. 
but the light cuts of a tungsten carbide fly cutter just gives a beautiful finish. Well, I know from all the comments in the previous videos that there's a lot of interest in this attachment. Uh, a lot of viewers are just intrigued by it and just want to watch more videos on it and are fascinated by how does the internal uh, pitch generating mechanism work. And so I'm happy to produce videos for you folk. But also there's quite a few machinists that really want one of these units for their shop. They want to buy a unit uh, or they want the plans or a kit set to build their own. And I've talked about this in other videos and either of those three options is problematic for me. I'm a one man band. I can't manufacture something this complicated myself. I need to sell the design to someone else and I've been having trouble finding that buyer. I could produce plans um, and uh, possibly some key components in the kit set, but there's problems with that too. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you really want one of these uh, Thread Express attachments, please make sure you've seen the previous five videos that outline all the various pros and cons. Uh, if you still really want it after watching those videos, then send me an email and let me know your thoughts. If you just have some specific interest in it, please let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you found something interesting here or useful, please like and consider subscribing if you're not already subscribed. Okay, catch you next time.